So it's absolutely crazy for me to think that I have dailyed this 2020 Defender for the last six months of my life. I have accumulated eight and a half thousand miles in this car. And this is a car that when it was released, I never ever thought that I would even see myself in. This isn't a review of the 2020 Defender, more of a look over of some of the technology, some of the features that excite me personally about this vehicle. The actual 2020 Defender has loads more tech inside of it than my previous cars. Like, it's not even comparable. We're talking air suspension, surround cameras, digital driver's display, off-road information, and I'm gonna go through all of that in this video and then show you some of the mods that I have done personally to this Defender to make it unique for my use case. So if that sounds interesting to you, I think we should start with the outside of this car first. One thing I really, really like about this car is the light design on here. Now, I actually don't have the upgraded daytime running LEDs. There's just two little bulbs in the side, but I think it looks kind of retro up at the front just to have those two little bulbs lit in the daytime. Where it gets really exciting though is round the rear. I absolutely love these square brake lights on both sides. I think they really, really make a statement and look absolutely awesome. I like how this thing looks. When it was first released and the renders you know, were leaked, I thought, oh no, what is that? But after living with it for six months, this thing's awesome and let me tell you why. It turns heads as you walk down the road. It has an absolutely awesome road presence without screaming, ooh, look at me. It's not a flashy car, it still seems to turn heads. Whether that's for the right reasons or not, well, to be honest, I couldn't really care less because I like it. But I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts are about the actual looks of this car down below. There's literally two buttons on the dash right here, a picture of a Defender, one that says down and one that says up. And literally, if you click the button, you can adjust the ride height of this car. And we're not talking by a couple of centimeters, like this is an absolutely huge gap. The car genuinely feels bigger when you're sat in it, when it's in its max ride height versus when it's in its lowest ride height. Now, the only other thing as far as tech is concerned on the outside of this car is basically all done in the wing mirrors. Now, like most cars nowadays, the wing mirrors do fold on lock and open, but there's also two other bits of tech inside these wing mirrors. There's a little projector, which is really cool. It displays the uh, Defender logo on the floor. Obviously, that's only really visible at night, but it's a cool little touch for a, well, off-road vehicle like this. And the wing mirrors have also got these fisheye cameras in them. There's actually four fisheye cameras all around the car, which can merge together in the software to make an awesome 3D model. And we'll go over that a little bit later when when we move on to the infotainment screens. Now, let's move on to the inside of the car because this is where the technology really, really shines. We've got two displays in this car. We've got our main infotainment screen, which is actually just, well, quite a thin screen. You can put your hand all the way behind this screen. Like, there's nothing behind it, which is really cool. There's so much storage in here. And then you've also got another screen, which is in front of the driver. Now, this is the digital driver's display. And the one thing I really like about this is you can have multiple views on this. You can change it when you're driving 
living. So it basically feels like a new car because if you want to, you can have two dials. Or if you want, if you want to change it up, you can have one dial. Or if one dial doesn't seem futuristic enough to you, you can have this full driver's display be an interactive Google Maps view. And this car actually has a 4G SIM card in it, it has its own 4G connection, so it can download the satellite images from Google Maps and display them across this screen. Now, obviously the 4G connection is baked inside the car and that is a monthly cost, which I'm not paying for right now because when you get the car, you get your first year for free. But after the first year, it's something like $14.99 a month. So I'm a little bit torn as to whether I'm gonna be paying for that connection connectivity or not. And with the 4G connection, you can also use that as a wireless hotspot inside the car, which is really, really cool. One thing that always really wows people every time they get inside of this new Defender is the amount of USB ports in here. So if you were to look around the car, we've got one here for the passenger, which is in his little, well, space could be up here. We've got two for the driver or whoever's in the front. I can use then Apple CarPlay with my phone through the cable. Unfortunately, it's not wireless. Unlike my BMW, you have to be plugged in. Now, one thing you can do, which unfortunately I don't have in this car, but right here is obviously the center console console forward slash armrest. Now you can spec in this center console to be a mini fridge. How cool is that? So if you're going somewhere on a long trip, you can actually have this as a mini fridge to store your, well, couple of Coke cans in. It's obviously not that big. And then you've also got a plethora of USB ports and old school cigarette lighters on the back too. There's honestly so much connectivity in this car. It's unreal. You could do a road trip on this and keep everybody charged up with ease. Now I'm gonna start with the cameras because that is the most interesting. So you click there and you get this 3D model of a Defender. And then I'm not sure what I'm gonna call them here, little triangles, you get these on this top-down view. So this is actually a top-down view that's being stitched together. We'll go over this a little bit later, but you can see that there's a black area underneath the car, as you can see here. Now the car will actually superimpose the ground underneath the car when you're driving forward, which is really cool. Now you get this cool tile view, which I kind of like. However, if you're not a fan of the tile view, you can click this and then you get a normal app view, which basically shows you all of the apps. Got the wheel info, I've got the weather, driving style, and then we can go here, we can change the source for the radio, we can look at a few of my commutes, compass, and then a few more things like wade sensing, which is going through water. And this is a little interactive screen that shows you what the suspension is doing, whether the diff is locked, and what power is being sent to what wheel of the car. Really cool stuff. And then for those of you wondering what the map is like, it's basically exactly the same as what's on the digital driver's display. You get this awesome Google Maps view, which, well, depending on the 4G signal, can sometimes take a while to load in, but as you can see here, it's doing it pretty fast. The one thing I would say about the UI is it seems to be running at about 15 to 20 frames a second and it is noticeable because obviously you're interacting with it, you know, with your finger, so you expect it to be 60 frames, but that is my only complaint about it. Other than that, it works and it works very very well. So guys, before we continue, today's video is sponsored by Free Trade. Just looking at the world, what's going on, the current situation that we're in, all of us are trying to earn a little bit of extra passive income. Whether that's something to do with a side hustle that you've set up, or you're deeply into crypto, or you're into housing markets, or even stock trading. That's where free trade comes in. Now I do just want to remind you guys that I am not your financial advisor and this isn't financial advice and when you are investing just do remember that your capital is at risk. But what I can tell you is trading is usually, well it seems to me anyway, quite daunting and a little bit off-putting. But that's why free trade are here with these few simple steps to make trading a little easier. Number one, commission free investing. Free trade, unlike most of the other trading platforms out there, don't offer any type of commission fee when you're actually trading. So that means all of your profits, well, they can be kept for you, which is absolutely brilliant. Number two is that it's a simple investing app for sort of any experience level, i.e. great for noobs like me. The app itself is designed with ease of use in mind and you can start investing from as little as just two pounds. 
Free trade also offer what's called US fractional stocks, which basically means you can invest a small amount of money into, well, really expensive stocks. And number three, Free Trade are a broker that you can completely trust. Free Trade's pricing model is super, super transparent, so there's no hidden fees that are, well, going to come back later to bite you when you're least expecting it. And they were also the winner of the British Bank Awards two years in a row in 2019 and 2020, and they took the title for Best Trading Platform. So if you want to start trading today, head to freetrade.io forward slash techflow and get one free share worth up to £200. So you can download the app, create and fund your account and basically start trading today. Okay, so here we are. You guys can see out the front of the car, uh, we have an obstacle in front of us and let's just see how this Land Rover is going to tackle it. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is use this button here to change the ride height of the car. Now there's three different modes, there's what I call slammed and then there's normal mode and then there's off-road mode. So now we've gone from slammed into normal and then we're going to click it again to go into off-road mode. Now you can squeeze a little bit of extra height out of this car if you actually use the terrain selection here and we're going to select mud ruts. There we go, and now what I'm gonna do is place my foot on the brake and then hold this for three seconds and then we'll get an extra couple of inches out of our ride height. And now we're ready to try and tackle this huge hill. So, there we go. So we can see all around the car here exactly what's going on. So if I'm gonna hit something up the front there, now we can definitely see what's happening. Literally just crawling up here at about, well, two miles an hour. Literally going up here at two miles an hour, nice and slow. And as you can see, just like that, an absolute piece of cake. Climb up to the roof of the car. This, this is where this car really belongs. So now we're out on the track and this is really where this car just feels at home. When you drive this car on the road, it's big, it's heavy, it's noisy, it's clunky, and it makes you think, why would you even buy one of these just for driving it on the road? And the fact is, you wouldn't. This car isn't really made for just road driving. Yes, people are gonna obviously go and pick up their kids from school in it, but this is where this car belongs, in the fields, in its max ride height, going over bumps like this with absolute ease. One thing I should tell you guys is I am not an off-road expert, but the thing with this Defender is if you click on wheel info here, it does absolutely everything for you. It automatically locks and unlocks the differential, and on top of that, it will automatically select low or high range gears, depending on what it thinks I need. The car doing everything, I kind of like it. I'm not fussed that I don't have control because to be honest, the car is making a better decision than probably I would, and you'll see that in just a second. Okay, so as you guys can see, I am approaching what looks to be like a vertical wall of mud. The car is in its off-road mode, it's in its highest setting. We can go ahead now and use these screens right here to measure, well, the bearing of this hill or this drop, whatever you want to call it. So as you can see, look, 12, 15, 16, a little bit more. Now you can see on here as well, it tells you which wheel has the power or which one's getting stuck, look. So we maxed out there at about 23 degrees. Now there's another one down here. Let's go back down it. So we are on a decline right now of about minus 23. And as you can see, when I turn my wheels, you can see which way the wheels are facing. And then obviously if I want to, I can also bring up the camera system to look out the front of the car. Now this is super, super cool. As I drive forward, the car is gonna superimpose what the camera sees and put it underneath the car. Look at that. So if you're rock crawling, you can see where the big rocks are and if you've passed them or not it's super super cool tech that i think a lot of people don't even expect from land rover it mows down literally anything that's in front of it it is an absolute tank and the more i drive this thing off road the more the more i fall in love with it the more i just want to go back and get off the tarmac again it's so 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 fun actually also spec up your Defender with a domestic plug socket 
in the back. Now, if you did that, it would live here. Now, unfortunately, I don't have one of those on my car because I didn't actually spec this car up. But as you can see, I have three UK three pin plugs and a whole bank of USB chargers there and that disappears off into the car. Now, if I go ahead and disconnect my subwoofer here, that will then allow us to pull this little tab up here and then we can now see all of my accessories that I have in here. So I have ran 12 volts here from the car's battery and this is a 1000 watt sine wave converter. So you could run like kettles and industrial appliances off this because this is 1000 watts and it can cope with it. This JBL amplifier and this LC2i is all stuff basically for the sound system in this car and also to power my subwoofer. Now, like I mentioned, you can spec a lot of things into this car. You can also spec what's called the Meridian sound system, which is like a, I don't know, like a 15 speaker system with two subwoofers. Unfortunately, I don't have that in this car, so I've had to add my own subwoofer because the stock bass system in this car really, really is terrible. But there you guys have it. That is all of the tech inside of the 2020 Land Rover Defender. And I've even shown you it in practice off road and how it could, well, maybe be useful to you. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. If you have, well, a like rating would be awesome. And let me know what you want to see next. Yeah, my name's been Alex. This has been Tech Flow, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.